All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Orange Peelers. You can probably work out that we're not on video this week. This is audio only. But Zane, you're here with me anyway. I am. We are back. We're Fortunately, b- out of all weeks, we couldn't do a grand final preview because Virgin stuffed Winston over. So we just had to drop our predictions, which were very wrong anyway. So Were they very wrong? We, got oh, the, we both tipped Panthers. It was closest though. Let's have a look. I'm going to pull it up now. Obviously, if you follow us on Instagram, at Orange Peelers, you would have seen our grand final predictions. As Zane just said, there wasn't an episode last week because I got absolutely screwed I'm over by Virgin. Fisher Harris for Clive Church. Yeah, you did. I'd Liam Martin. <laughs> so we both said Panthers to win. I said 24 to 12. You said 26 10. What was the final score? It was 26 24. So I guess you, you were closer. I was closer in terms of margin, but you also got Panthers score right. True. So there's that. And then our try scorers, we both, for first try scorer, I said Crichton. And he scored, but not first. And then you said Luai, who he didn't did. score and got injured. But then any time Toro scored, you had Stephen Crichton. Mm. And I had Brian Toto. I don't think Toto scored. He did not score. But, but and Crichton I don't think did. anyone would have picked Mitch Kenny to be first try scorer. Oh, he was paying like $61 oh, he on Pickle Bet. It was wild. Very, yeah. very value. But, yeah, so I guess... And Clive Churchill, Churchill, you went Liam Martin, yeah, which Liam I Martin. thought was a real smoky. Yeah. Because I thought he could have gone out there and had an absolute blind. I went Fisher-Harris purely on the reason that I said if Penrith were to win, it would be down the middle. Moses Leota would have been my backup option. But I thought Leota, after the game, I thought he could be a good chance. I'm like, after that, Cleary, Cleary. Yeah. He's definitely going to get it. It was hard it. to look past Cleary. Obviously, yeah. we'll talk about – that's what this whole podcast is going to be about, Nathan Cleary, goodness oh. me. But, yeah, James, when you sent me James Fisher-Harris – as your prediction, I actually thought it was like a mistake. Oh, I couldn't you? believe that you were going James Fisher Harris, <laughs> and that's I guess that's the beauty of not doing our predictions on the podcast because I don't get to hear your reasoning. It was just yeah. a, it was just well, a that, text. I just explained my reasoning. Yeah, then. your reasoning was you just thought, which was I guess it was as you sort of said it was. So I figured about it right now, to a he degree. Probably was never going to win it anyway. Yeah, like the Fords did. I can see your theory into it but if then at the same time had, like an absolute blinder like you know 200 meters like for yeah forward, like something like that something that just undisputable yeah but i feel like fords don't win the club like, that much yeah, no except i sam think burgess, i yeah. think back to sam burgess 2014 luke lewis won it but oh yeah true willie mason won it in he 04 did. so like they can win it but usually it's not yeah. usually it's a fullback or half like, but real high grades probably should have got it in 2019 as well. Yeah, I know a lot of people argue Sonny Bill should have got it in 2018. No, sorry, yeah, not yeah. 2018, 2013. But as I said, like Forge don't win it that often. And ironically, we both picked a Ford, Ford to get I it. Know. But let's talk about the games, and this is what this entire podcast is about the grand final review. Where do we start? So, the first 10, 15 minutes, I'm like, Brisbane are no chance here. Like, they were just dreadful in attack, just making errors everywhere. Yeah. And Kenny got that simple try, which was just, like, for a grand final in a professional sport, should just not have not yeah. happened the Broncos. Yeah. And late, Lazy. right at the end of the half, the Broncos hit back. And I'm like, oh, I still think Penrith have enough. But early in that second half, I don't think anyone expected that to happen. Well, let, the let's, Broncos let's stay, 24 points. Let's stay on the first half for a second, then we'll move to the second half. The... So Panthers led 8-0 until late in the second half. And they had a lot of ball, I felt. Hmm. I felt like they were attacking the try line a lot. And I thought 8-0 actually sort of, that was good for the Broncos. Oh, yeah. Because they did very well to defend that much. Obviously, like They could have taken confidence out of that. Yeah, their 100%. And I, they probably did, I guess, because they ended up getting so far ahead. But like Panthers taking the two to make it eight points sort of was a compliment to the Broncos' defense. Yeah. And I just felt like Panthers were attacking so much, like, Lots of sets, lots of repeat sets, lots of ball, lots of field position, obviously, like attacking the line. And to only come away with a try to Mitch Kenny where it was like like, like it was a, a fluke yeah, try. It was a lucky try. I thought that really reflected just good Which Broncos cost, defense. In the end of the, at the end of the day, it did cost them. Yeah, it did. But then, as you said, Broncos scored late in the half and it was 8 6 half time. Mm. What were your thoughts at half time? Where I did you think it was going to go? Penrith, I just thought the game would end low scoring, like 14 12, 14 10, something yeah. like that. It was a very but defensive we first half. We did not half. expect that from the Broncos, did we? Nah, when not it at happened, all. We're like, that's it, they've won the comp. Penrith yeah. cannot possibly come back from this. Did you think so? Of the it, impossible happened. Let's rewind again for a second. So they come out into the second half, 8 6. And then Broncos scored three they or did. four. They scored three. Oh, it was all those remain in like true. 10, 15 minutes. I think it was in eight yep. minutes. In the exact same like fashion. Yeah. Yeah, like, the exact same try over and over and over. I think it was Cleary. It was. It I'm was pretty. Cleary. It was. Yes. 
It was right. his side at least. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, I don't know if blaming is the right word, but a lot of people are bagging Cleary's first 20 minutes of the second half, yeah. d- especially defensively. So it would have been a Cleary. Up, wasn't he? Yeah. He came out that last 20 minutes. It was literally very, a 10-minute period. Very close to Andrew Johns instead of Origin. Oh, yeah. And like, we'll get we'll get to the Cleary thing because that's, that's all we're going to really talk about in this episode. But Ezra Mam. He scored in the 44th minute, it's a the 52nd supporters. minute, and the 54th in. minute. I'm going to jump in. The Broncos supporters saying he should have won Clive Churchill. If they won, yes, he should have, but they didn't win. Yeah. He yeah. Did, will not get Clive Churchill if he didn't win. That, if you're playing the Roosters, he might have got it. And the Roosters well, I can even, uh, to be fair, because obviously we've seen losing players get it in the past, Jack White and Daly Cherry Evans. Yes, yeah, both against the Roosters, by the way. There you go. <laughs> Shout out to Roosters fans. Hainsey comes to mind. But... <laughs> I think if the Panthers winning wasn't so – like if it wasn't all just one player that won of the game, because like as we saw the way it unfolded, it was literally just all Cleary that won of the game. If it was more of a team effort and there wasn't an individual that stood out, then I can understand Ezra yeah. Mam getting it in that fashion of like it was a close game. They Brooklyn's were dominating. They the 24-8 eight lead, yeah. like seriously. Like, and but it was all Cleary. He wasn't better. Like Cleary – was so deserving of that Clive Churchill oh, yeah. medal. I literally, he, he almost deserved two or three Clive Churchill medals. Yeah, it was that oh, insane. It was. But it was let's like let's talk over. about it. Give me your, give me a summary, Zane, of what what unfolded, what happened. So first of all, it was the line break to the Leota try, which I didn't think Leota could be that good of a support player, but it turns out he is. He's got a bit of pace. On let's him, give before you keep going. Let's give Moses Leota some raps for that play. He had oh, like yeah. obviously you would we never have expected him to be the support player overnight, like through the entire night. He was so good, but for him to turn very up underrated, player, in that, yeah, hundred percent, but. That's not his job to turn up in support. There. He's a front rower. Literally, you talk about like teams he's doing video sessions well. and stuff. If he doesn't get there in support, he's not getting in trouble for that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like maybe like your Dylan Edwards's, like whoever's like maybe hooker five eight, the centers, the wingers, they probably get in trouble for not backing up. Yeah, not but Leota. like most Leota is not getting in trouble if he doesn't back up, but he turns up anyway. And that's just one of those huge one percent of players that is the difference between the average players or the average teams and the good teams. Yeah. So I think he deserves a lot of credit for turning up on that play. Do you think play. would have done that? Nah, no way. Yeah, exactly. No way. And then I think after that, was it after? No, I think it was before the karate try, the 40-20. One of the yeah. cleanest 40-20s I've ever seen. Oh, it? The, it, was it was across beautiful. his body as well. It was beautiful. He was like in the middle of the field from memory. I've watched it. I've watched the last 20 minutes. Like on repeat, like I've watched it a couple of times now. He's like in the middle of the field. Usually, when you're kicking a 40 20, you set up in obviously like different kickers. It, it depends on like wind and like what yeah. foot you're kicking with and stuff. But usually, they like to set up on the opposite side, like sort of near the sideline yeah. and kick across the field. You know, this from like belly life. Yeah, yeah, ex- yeah, literally. That's what exactly why I know it. I've never kicked a 40 20 in real life. This is rugby league live four stuff. Or you set up in this in that channel again, sort of near the sideline to aim for the same sideline. Yeah. He stood in the middle of the field and kicked across his body, which so he's like right footed. So usually you'd it rather kick clean. to the, the right sideline. Bounced he kicked to the well. left yeah. and just nailed bounced, it. Bounced so perfectly. Yeah. Like the and moment it the first bounce, everyone knew it was like going out as a forty twenty. And then it was after so this perfect. Was the cried and try, which was just you know a simple cried and try really. Like Nathan Cleary passed into the oh, ball. Of course, yeah, of course he did. <laughs> yeah, of course he did. Yeah. And then finally, well, a lot, few things happened. You know, penalties, whatever, six against, and then I've looked at this play a bit more. The Cleary try. Mm. Walsh was lazy. Oh yeah, there was a couple of lazy Broncos players. Yeah. I think he, I don't know what it is with the Broncos. It happened in 2015. Why did the fullbacks get cursed in the dying? Yeah. Like Darius Boyd is walking over when Michael Morgan's breaking. Yeah. And then we got Walsh just standing there, like not in position, like the fullback. I think he was at marker and then just no, didn't he get wasn't. back. He, so, yeah, well, sort of, but after the, he was at marker, he walked like towards yeah. the other end. He didn't no, like, yeah, he, he wasn't getting to where he should have been. I don't think he expected the dummy. I think he expected him to keep going left. Yeah, and that's just – is that like Nathan Cleary – I think his eyes up footy in that moment, obviously like yeah, that's not something that only Cleary could do. That's like a pretty common thing for a player to like look up and notice which way all the defenders are going and then like step off the opposite way. But to have that aware, awareness on the fifth play with three and a half minutes left in a grand final and you're down by two points, have a look at it here. I've got it up on my phone to watch. So yeah, Walsh is over here. 
Yeah. As you said, he he's just in he the defended line. And he as the fullback, yeah, he yeah, should be... Look at his reaction yeah. when he... Well, you can't say it, but we might have said the footage. But look at his reaction when he knows And then he's just, like, oh, dude. And Carrigan as well, pretty lazy. Just not covering in behind. I think they were just over it. I think when the 24 to 8 happened, they're like, yep, that's it. We've done it. And yeah. they just switched off a little bit. They weren't going 100%. Yeah, 100%. And that, that, as I said on the Leota play... The difference between the good players and the great players and the good teams and the great teams is the one percenters. And we see it in Origin all the time with Queensland exactly. this year. That was the difference between Queensland and New South Wales. And I feel like that was the difference between Panthers and Broncos. Just the one percenters. Exactly. With 20 minutes left, down by 16 points, Panthers just kept turning up and kept doing the one percenters. Mm. And they're, they're three-peat premiers for a reason. Exactly. Yeah. Do you have any... I can't believe Broncos didn't win that game. <laughs> Yeah, so you, you thought they were I home? I thought they were home. I think everyone so did. did. I, I think yeah. Canada supporters thought they were. Like, I literally said, I loss. literally said, I can't believe Broncos are premiers. That's what I said with 20 minutes left. And you've got to keep in mind as well. Like, obviously, we've sort of already summed up the Cleary 20 minutes. Before that 20-minute period starts, Yo goes off, which is Cleary's lock. And I'd, I'd, I'd say... Lua is off as well. Yeah, so point. Lua, but start with Yo. Yo's off, and that's who Cleary links up with the most. Either he gives Yo the ball, like if nothing's on, or he gets the ball off Yo. Then you got Luai, who's clear his partner in crime, the five eight. You Cold then have really good. Good you then have Sorensen go off. The second rower, a starting second rower was off. I think Martin was off at that stage as well. Tungo gets injured and goes off. He's clear his centre. So literally all these men that are normally around Cleary, and then you talk, and then obviously Cogger comes on for Luai. Which means Mitch Kenny's now playing extended minutes at Hooker, who's also like another key man. <sighs> the only man that Cleary had around him that he normally would have around him with ten minutes left in the game was Edwards at fullback, mm. who's like not that yeah, big more, of a more, key player yeah, around the halfback. Is, yeah, and he final, yeah. compared to last year. And so the fact that all of that happened and Cleary still managed to find a way to pull the Panthers into a game, it was just phenomenal. Like it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Queenslanders aren't happy about it. They don't <laughs> want to hear an inch of it. It was just like, it was a him performance. That's what a lot of people it are was. saying, but it really was. That really was the and definition the of a him performance. Name? I forgot his name on Palace of Dribblers, who completely dissed Cleary oh. two minutes to go and completely yeah. embarrassed himself when it came Go for, find the post. That was absolutely dreadful on Palace of Dribblers. His name was dribblers. like Zach. Oh, I don't know where he it is anymore. He ended up like turning the comments off. You better find it. Oh, he deleted it since. I know that. Did he delete the post? I'm pretty sure. I don't think he did. Because I went to look for it a few days later and it wasn't there. Some people would have screenshots of it. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here, I found it. Zach Jack. What a name, Zach Jack. <laughs> two first names. Oh, hey, I've got two first names. Careful. <laughs> Potter's not really a first name, yeah, is it? It's not Zach Jack. Like, come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Zach Jack's worse. Like, last name Jack. Yeah. That's worse than Neville. Um, Cleary is a dead set regular season footy player. Ma'am forever, Cleary never. He, that was his post. With, I'd say, 15 minutes, yeah. 20 minutes it left. would have been when Broncos were up 28. Yeah. Before. 24 to foot eight. Yeah, it aged very, very well. It aged very well. Oh, dear. But I feel like that's sort of how everyone was feeling, to be honest. Like, did you see the last 20 minutes coming? No, I did not. I literally try. said... I, I said after that third man try, I was like, we well, had heaps of mates at my house. I'm like, Broncos will score again. Yeah. Like they're going to score It again. felt like they were going to get to like 40. No, nah, I didn't think they'd get to that much, but I'm like... That's how I felt. 30. It felt like it was going to blow out. You remember but the... Like, obviously, you remember the 2014 grand final. It had that vibe yeah, where they were just, just going to keep scoring and keep scoring. Like the turning point of the grand 2014 one was the top George Burgess try. Yeah. Where he just palmed off Tony Williams. Yeah. <laughs> And just ran over the top. Oh, gosh, I love that try so much. I bet you do. I oh. hate it. Um, <laughs> I was going to say something. What was I going to say? It was going to be about, oh, we're in like a couple of group chats, obviously. And in one of the group chats, I went to say with maybe 25 to go, I was going to say the only way that Panthers can win this game is if Nathan Cleary steps up. Like if they're to win this game, it has to be Cleary. And, and if Cleary does it, He'll, it'll take him to like a whole new level of greatness. Like yeah, it's got to yeah. be insane. And I didn't send that message. And then he set up the Leota try. And then I said, I sent the message. I was like, five minutes ago, I was going to say this. And then 
he just kept going. Oh. He kept going, and that's one of the greatest takes I've ever produced, ever. This is why I'm here on this podcast, Zane, <laughs> because that was a pretty good take. And actually, speaking of podcasts, we might – I don't know why I'm pretending to talk to a camera here because there is no <laughs> camera. Um, a lot of you might have seen there's awards going around. Yes. For, and, you know, we've received nominees for our teams as being the best content creators, but, like, there's short answer questions, and there's also one for best podcast. So talk us through, talk us through the, those awards, the Zane, because – you're heavily involved in the yes, organisation of the awards. So talk, tell the tell yeah. the listeners what what is that award ceremony, you know, like. Just, yeah. Tell, so go a bit more in depth. To vote for the best creators on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Rugby league creators. Yeah, rugby league creators in particular. And just, yeah, it's just for fun, just to see who everyone thinks is the best. And, like, look, I'll say it here. We know the voting is unfair. Like, it's just, it's going to, that's just the way it is. Like, we know the people who post on their stories and the more popular people are going to get the votes. Yeah. There's not much we can really do about that, is it? And we know with, especially the club content creators, like, there is heaps of them. We could only, we only come up with a few on them, but we know there's heaps of edit accounts that we probably could have put on. But yeah, I think one just, critique, is Zane, is really. of the awards, and we were talking about this earlier, and I think you're, you're aware that it was, not an error, but just something for the future. Um, you didn't... When you put, like, a list of each club's creator, you put... Or rather, you didn't put, like, an option for other. You sort of just listed a couple of names and then that yes, was it. Yes, yes. I feel like in the future, maybe put, next, like, another next option. Year. Well, in the preseason, the CLPA, which, like, you know, it's... It's a group that unites content creators together. We're planning to do our preseason predictions in the same sort of format on a Google forum. Yeah, okay. Or forums. Why did I For, say like Google that? forum. Google forums. Gosh, I finally just left school. I should know that by now. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna like you know list options like which team will rise the most from the bottom nine, which the team will drop the most. And oh gosh, don't don't want to hear that. But <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll make it better next time we do it. And then in 2024, this oh, creator content creator awards will be voted. Gosh. I, can't speak today, can I? You're on we'll fire, mate. You're doing yes. great. You're doing great. But make sure to vote Orange Peel is for best podcast. Yeah, and I've actually been told a few people are voting us for best intro. Best intro. Yes, I have. The good seen, old siren I'll admit, sound. I do. I'm the only person who can see the results, and I have seen Orange Are we Peel. leading? Tell this we're is not Orange Peel. We're, we're not, not winning. We're not in the top we're four. We're not winning best we're intro. We're not in the top four. For best intro. Oh, you're kidding. Let me you say, better rig that. There is another podcast that is in the top four that is owned by Dan and Kemp. Oh, a bloke in a yes, bar best I, love, I don't know why people will love li- listening to the sound of beer, a beer can Everyone opening, loves beer. but not the sound what of would you the rather, siren. Yeah, what would you rather listen to, a beer can opening <laughs> or, or the ANZ Stadium siren? Accor, sorry. Gotta, sorry, Accor, yeah. Accor. I'd probably prefer the siren, so <laughs> yeah. vote us for. Who did you vote for best intro? Uh, not Because I'll be honest, I didn't vote us. <laughs> I voted for Hainsey. Oh, yeah. I don't remember who I voted for. It wasn't, I thought about Hainsey. I thought about bloke, maybe Hello Sport. Mm. I might have voted for for best intro because they've got like they've got funky music. They do. Actually, I'll t- tell you what. They now that I have really thought about it, their betting show probably should have got best intro because it's got like they've got like an actual intro on the betting show. You should go check it out. Mm. But don't check out the betting company that sponsors that <laughs> show. Just check out their betting show. Shout out to Picklebet. Um, do you have anything else to talk about in the grand final? Is there any other talking well, we've points? Gone over it all. Like, well, there could be more talking points, but we have to get a real in-depth review of yeah. the entire game, wouldn't we? And explain, oh, if this guy was over here, this could have happened. <laughs> yeah. and all that. Sort of I thing. just think, like, you can't. I don't think you can talk about Nathan Cleary enough. I haven't thought. I haven't stopped thinking about Nathan Cleary oh, yeah. and his performance in this grand final. I'm still just completely shocked by it. All years, Zane. I don't know if all years fair, but a couple of times on Orange Pillars this year. We've talked about Nathan Cleary and his legacy, especially around origin time. And we've we've asked the question, like, where is he going to end up when his career ends? And you've you've actively said that he's going to be... Hang on, sorry, you just showed me something. Yeah, I, I don't get that. I don't understand oh, what that well, means. Doesn't matter. We're just showing a response that was put down yeah, from um, a certain creator, which I thought was hilarious. Um, what, was I, what was I saying? Oh, You're all year we've talked... You've, again. You've said all year, and I've agreed that Nathan Cleary, although he might not be the greatest of all time right now, as in, but like this is halfway through the season, that one day he'll and he's on the trajectory oh, the to be one of the greatest of all, of all time. time. Yeah, I think he is. I think based off this grand final, he's a lot closer, yeah, isn't he? A lot he? of people won't want to admit that, but he truly is. Think about this: he's now won more premierships 
than Joey Johns, Jonathan, Jonathan Thurston. Thurston. I think Cameron Smith had technically three. Yeah, so he's got the same. So guy. the same technically. I think he's going to win a lot more. Oh, well, he's 25 years old. He's got at least eight years out of him, possibly 10. Yeah. He's got eight to 10 years left in him. Usually halfbacks, statistically, 35. peak when they're 30 and yeah. retire when they're so around 34, 35. Yet. Like, yeah. look at Joey, Kronk, JT, even yes. like Freddie Filler. They all peaked late Fleary in their career. hasn't even peaked yet, which yeah. is scary. Super scary. Terrifying. I think that all he really needs, if you look at, like, accolades alone, like, if you looked at get rid of their name, get rid Dally of their M. age. He needs a Dally M. All he needs is a Dally M. And to dominate an origin. Yeah, exactly. If he had, say he had two Dally M's, which he's come very close to yes, winning. he's just had hinders in every season. He hasn't played like a full season. Oh, if no. he'd played a full season, he'd have a Dally M. Oh, yeah. But like just pretend. He'll get one as well. Like, that's what, exactly. Know. He's 25 yeah. years old. So pretend just give him two Dally M's and give him three more origin wins, which would take him to six. And pretend just one of those origin series is just all him. Like he was in the grand final. If you look at just accolades and not the name or the age. Those accolades are the best ever. Oh yeah, but, if you like, including two Dalliums, which he hasn't won yet, and like dominating in Origin. But my point is, once he gets those Dalliums, and once he gets the Origin, which is almost just, which is almost guaranteed, you can yeah. almost guarantee he's going to do it because he's just shown he's capable of doing it. He just needs to do what he did on the weekend in an Origin. Oh yeah, and he's got eight years to do that. <laughs> if he does, the Blues, God, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, Very good. So I'm just I'm saying I think Cleary is going to be the greatest of all time. I totally is agree. he in the conversation yes. now? Yes, he. You reckon he's is. in the goat conversation he now? Is. And people blow up when they people mention him, but he is. I don't know why people are so obnoxious to it and don't want him there. Yeah, he seriously, is one of the best players of all time. Bit of tall poppy syndrome, Zane. Like you know, in five years' time, Lockett and Elias will be in that category as well. But we'll talk about that then when he's there. Lockett Elias. Yeah, Lockett Elias is. He's not bad. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you this, Zane. Nathan Cleary's performance in the grand final, I think there's one way that it can be described, and that's Matt Burden esque. Yeah. Matt Burden esque. That's what that performance was on the weekend. You know what it actually reminded me of? I think it was round 17. I could be wrong. You'd probably be able to correct me. But let's just say, for the sake of me not being bothered to Google it, it was round 17. Now you think Cleary's performance on the weekend, it reminded me of Toby Saxon against South Sydney earlier this year. Yes, what, it did. What, New South Wales Cup game? No, Toby Saxon doesn't play New South Wales well, Cup. He plays first game, grade. That's, that's what that game was. <laughs> that's what it reminded me of, Zane. Toby Saxon against the Rabbitohs. So you're comparing Nathan Cleary to a reserve grade game. I'm comparing Nathan Cleary to the one and only Toby Saxon, oh, yes. Jesus. The greatest halfback in the NRL. No, it was, it was Matt Burton esque, though. It was a pretty good performance. Yeah, it was just whatever. They won by four points against <laughs> another reserve grade team. Are you calling Broncos a reserve grade team now? This isn't Broncos. This is South Sydney I'm talking about. Oh, you're saying South Sydney were the reserve grade team? Yeah, because all their people are <laughs> stole all our players. Are we just ignoring the fact that Bulldogs had more New South Wales Cup players in that game? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll just ignore Wales that Cup fact. Game, real. We had all our key players out. Burden's a key player at the Dogs. Sexton is a key player at the Dogs. They both play. We're missing Fox. Burden, Fox is a winger. He's, an, he's a rep footy player. But he's a winger. He's in the Australian squad. He's a winger. He's not a major loss. <laughs> he's a huge loss. Uh, I disagree. Massive loss, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Massive. Toby Sexton was playing his first game. You can't say he was a key player. Although he was because he absolutely dominated Nathan Cleary's style in that game. <laughs> but that's enough Bulldogs driver. Those talk. The grand final, I can't really think of anything else for us to touch on. What was our priest? My, I remember my bloody Sharks Rabbitohs one. Yeah, like, you said Sharks Rabbitohs. We've never got to that. I would have said either. Panthers Storm, maybe? Oh, no, Roosters. Because I thought Roosters were going to win the comp. So mine would have been Panthers Roosters as my like grand final I prediction. I just laugh at looking back and seeing everyone predicting the Roosters so high. I'm like, yeah. where were you getting that? I'll tell you what, Honestly. Zane. We're, I'm gonna... And it's going to happen again next year. People are going to overhype them and then they're just going to underachieve and then get a few cheap wins at the end of the season, sneak into the eight. It will happen again next year. It's Guaranteed. October 4th at the moment, Zane, 2023. This is completely off the cuff, but let's give our grand final predictions for next year. Who do you think plays in the grand final next year? Just so we can get in early, because if we're right, I'm it'll look pretty say... cool doing it this early. Like, this is a year in advance. There's a whole preseason to... Go before you can oh, really no. give a real Lots prediction. So early, early this prediction. is early, early, early. Well, I'm going to say. Oh, see, look, people will predict the same grand final, but I don't think that's going to happen. 
Like back to back. Panthers, one. Broncos. Uh, yeah, I want to predict that, but I just. No, Pendriff have to lose at some point. Like, I think they've got heaps of comps still to come. But, like, Stephen Crichton, man. You'd have to think. Uh, yeah. I'm going to say Broncos. And I'm going to say. Might be a bit of a smoky this one, but I think this team could has shown that they can be better than what they were this year. Yeah, put themselves back in the form of the Cowboys. I'm going Broncos, Cowboys, Panthers, Cowboys. That is Broncos, smoke. Cowboys. Oh, oh, not Panthers, Broncos, Cowboys. Mm. Interesting. Like twenty fifteen rematch. Very early prediction as well. That's also just very very smoky. Yeah, it is. That's very smoky. Obviously, for me, twenty twenty four grand final, the Bulldogs will be there. Oh, Obviously. Christ. Obviously. Oh. Especially after the Panthers three pit, which is just added to the likelihood of the twenty twenty four premiership happening. Because as we all know by now, the last time a team three peated, the Bulldogs won the comp the next year. The last time the Bulldogs won Jersey flag, the Bulldogs won the comp next year. Oh, Obviously, the 2024 pattern, 74, 84, 94, 04, 14, win, uh, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win. If he made finals this year, I could probably back that, but it's just not. But then you look at all the other stuff as well, Zane. You have okay, to admit. Who, who will they be in the grand final? You have to admit, Zane, based off all those little facts, you have to admit there's something there. Like there's, like, there's something there's aligning. There's a few. It's just, it won't happen. It would not I mean, there's I'll a chance though. So like, when, look at the look at the facts. I'll laugh so Based much. Based off those facts, you have to admit there's something there. There's something cooking. You can't ignore that. Like, just be honest with yourself. You might not. You might not think I it's going it's to happen. Beyond, but there's something there. Admit there's something there. I could make the there. same statement about South in some sort of way. But you can't. I could. Go on, do it. Oh, last time the Panthers scored 500 points in a season, the Rabbitohs went on to win in 1972. I could come up with something like that. That's not a pattern. Well, it could be. That's not. It could be. Well, it's, it's not, though. Right. I'm, I'm just going to laugh at you next year when this does not happen. What do I get when it happens? When it happens? Yeah. Well, you're going to look very clever, aren't you? I'm going to look very <laughs> yeah. clever. Orange Peels might go to number one on the charts. We'll look that smart, Zane. So who's um, yeah, who are the Bulldogs the beating in the grand final? Heading in the last couple of years, I've always thought Bulldogs roosters. <laughs> just like as an 04 rematch as well. Just cause that, that sort of thing seems to happen in rugby league. But... The Roosters didn't look too good this year. They are getting Dom Young, but oh, they're, they're not improving that much. Oh, that's true. I do want to say Bulldogs Roosters, to be honest. Nah, screw it. I'm going to... It's hard. Like, you think surely Panthers will be there. Storm, maybe. I, they're always thereabouts. Know, Broncos there look very good. You that's know what? I'll give you a hot take while we're just giving random hot takes on the 4th of October. <laughs> I reckon Broncos are going to fall. Not necessarily out of the eight, but they've lost Flegler. I oh, know, and they've lost Farnworth. And they've lost Farnworth, who was their best centre this year, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, I think it's going to drop. There's two teams that made the eight, or no, three teams that made the eight that I think will miss it next year. Mm-hmm. But two of them were a lot higher. I think the Warriors will drop, and I think the Knights will drop. All right, surely the, the Warriors go up. The Raiders. They're adding Roger. I, I feel like they could, but at the same time, I feel like they're going to do something similar to what the Cowboys did yeah, last fair. year. Like, it's just a... Warriors, I agree. Raiders, Warriors thing to do. I think Raiders definitely. Raiders drop. are my smoke, smoky for the spoon. They've lost so many halves. They're my sm- smoky for the spoon. I oh, look at that side and I'm like, nah. Bulldogs are paying. Don't rate it based on all. like Premiership odds on an undisclosed betting company. Shout out to Picklebet. Can we please get some 2024 odds? Because I'd like to put my house on the Bulldogs, and I'm not going to do it with a company that's not Picklebet. So can we get that market, please? But on the undisclosed betting company. The Bulldogs are like more likely to win the comp than the Raiders, right? Which is pretty wild, like because the Raiders were playing yeah, finals I this year. Yeah, I love that Raiders. They've team lost a lot year. of halves. Like Jack Whiten, Jared Croker, but their half like, depth as well, like oh, Fogarty. It's terrible. They lost um, Snyder halfway through the season. Like Matt Frawley's leaving. But you know, under Ricky Stewart, do you reckon he'd let them get a wooden spoon? Might not have a choice. Oh, I feel like the wooden spoon is going to be a team that no one expects. Next year, because I don't think the Titans will get it. Nah, I don't. <laughs> Do you reckon they get back into finals footy? Well, look, I've got three teams dropping out. I got three coming in. You said so Knights dropping Knights, out. Warriors, Raiders. And I got Cowboys, Rabbitohs, and possibly Manly. What about the Bulldogs, mate? In. Hard to win comps possibly. outside of the top eight. See, I've got. I'm in a change in between Manly and Gold Coast to get that. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, Gold Coast, proof, Gold Coast again. Des Haslam. Yeah, man, never true. Know. They've got the side. They just. I don't know what it is there. That goes wrong. I saw Des Hasler. 
Did you? When I was coming back from the Gold Coast. What, was he up there? Yeah, he, I saw him at the airport. So I was like boarding my flight. Was he in his Titans gear? Or? Nah, he wasn't. I barely recognised him. He looked pretty old. He was just sort of... So the Gold Coast airport's weird the way their like gates work. Yeah. Usually at an airport. Have you ever been to an yeah. airport? So Gold you know how like... You've been to Gold Coast yeah, Airport? Yeah, been Gold Coast. So you, would you agree it's... The way the I'll gates are different to other like, airports. Like so I don't like, go to airports that often. But like so I'm normally they them. have like the lounge area where your gate is, where like all yeah, the seats yeah. are. I and then you just like walk area. into like the doorway. But at the Gold Coast, you have to like, there's no, that's not how it is. There's not really a lounge area. You walk into the doorway and then there's like a second area where you board, where usually you're boarding in the lounge sort of thing, if yeah. that makes sense. And so I, when I was boarding, I like walked through the first doorway to like line up to board. And Des Hasler was in that area. Like, just, like, on his own. Yeah, which was even weirder. Like, it wasn't like I saw him like out and around in the airport. He was, like, in, like, the boarding area, but wasn't getting on that flight. It was weird. It was it very be, weird. Yeah. I don't know what was going on. But, like, it was definitely him because you can't miss his hair. And, like, he hosted Bulldogs before. I know what Des Hasler looked like. <laughs> but, yeah, it was, it was very random to just see yeah. Des Hasler. Like, what I was saying, like, you know, you never – I don't know what it is with the Titans that just – they underachieve. And I don't yeah, know. I, they're my smoky for the eight, but I'll back Manly to stay safe. Manly, yeah. why Manly? I don't know. I think man, I, I don't see Manly doing anything. No. Seabold's just like they look worse next year than they did this year. Yeah, I, don't I know. guess they got Brooks coming. Parramatta could push up there. You think Parramatta jump back up? They should have yeah. made the eight this year. Yeah. They were unlucky with suspensions and injuries. Yeah, and the draw. Yeah, it's a tough one. I have to wait. Season It'll be a good season. I'll tell you what, obviously, like, this is meant to be a grand final review and we did review the grand final. All year, we've every week, we've said, how good is this season? Obviously, I remember round one, it started with that classic Storm Eels game. We had Broncos-Panthers as a second game this year that was a field goal no, it in it. It start with Storm Eels. It started with the charity match. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Yeah. My bad, the charity match. But this season, like, there's been that many good games and that many good moments. Alex Toll scored his first try. You know, Matt hat trick. Trill mid hat trick on Good Friday. Matt Burden <laughs> kicking the field goal against Cowboys. Oh, yeah. The Ox scoring against the Titans <laughs> to win the game. You got the South game against Panthers where they Pass scored at the end. Ta- you got Ilias kicking a field goal against Manly. Yes. Like there's and that's just our teams. Like every team has had crazy moments, like the Tigers even. Like they beat Panthers. Forest they you know, flogged the Cowboys. You know my series I'm doing where I go over every Yeah, the top three and moments and of each week. We'll be Manly. And we're actually doing we're in the middle of making a post on Instagram with a page, like a club post of the best moments of the year. So there's been heaps. And the point I'm trying to make is the grand final really just capped off the season. It and it was the finale it was we a deserved. Great grand final as well. Like if you look at it at the season as a TV show, that season finale just it's fits the the, t- the season. What do you think was the worst season ever? Well, what do you mean? I started watching it on 2013. Let me tell you the, the most forgettable season for me. Like the one that I just like forget the most. Yeah, 2017. I was I was thinking 2017. Like it had its moments, final. but when I look back, I'm like, what even happened that year? Yeah, like no, it was just I agree. A dominant grandfather. Like the Cowboys won that run, I know that, but it was just like, yeah. No, I agree. 2017. 2018 as well. 2019. 2018 yeah. was all right. 2018 was a weird year, though. I thought 2019 was 2018, decent. like every team in the top eight was like tied first. 2016. Yeah, that was. That was yeah. last time Bulldogs played finals. Like 2013 to 2015 was like the OG time in yeah. general for me. And then 2016. For me, it's like 2011 to 2013. And then 19 to some extent, it kind of like just. Because, yeah, Greenberg took over and it kind of went a bit, uh, Yeah. There. And then 2020 is when all these rule changes came in and COVID. And I, feel, I find it's been more entertaining since 2020. Yeah. Like more fast paced. It's been a better product in terms of entertainment oh, yeah. wise. But I guess the that's where the rule like changes. This year we've had the highest average crowds ever. since 2010. Oh, not oh, yeah, ever. But, but more than 2010, like ever. Yeah. But since 2010. Yeah, like big crowds this year. Which is good. Except for dogs games, you get like 8,000. <laughs> nah, the Woodle games just, get big crowds. Only at films. I'm pretty sure we had. A big average in South. Do all that, but I'm smart, pretty sure we did. Whenever I've seen dogs game, it's been like 8,000 at a core. The back end of the season get, was pretty we dire. More than you at a core. Yeah, but you were doing better. Where were Wait, you? when the Bulldogs are doing good. I oh, know. They, they show up. Yeah. They show up. Oh, yeah. I know, trust me. Yeah, you do know. You've copped it, bro. Oh, and geez. you'll cop it again. You deserve it. No, not on Good Friday. <laughs> on Good Friday, we always pump them and they're always gone. Not the next the year. Over. Not next year. We're well, winning Good we Friday. We always pump on Good Friday. That's a South home game too. Great. It is. is it? Yeah, no, it, yeah, is. it, it is. Be. It is. Well, we don't know yet, but... I'm no, it will be. They always, they always rotate it. Yeah. It will be. 
I love Good Friday. All right, Zane, I think I think <laughs> <Do> that you, <laughs> usually I like it up until the game ends. And three tries right in front of you. I just mean uh, Good Friday as as an idea. I like as a concept. Yeah, but the game itself, not usually. You haven't won since twenty seventeen. Yeah, <laughs> that's the year we flogged Jiz Bart. See, it that's like a good memory. That was the twenty fourth of nine. That was twenty sixteen when you flogged. Us. Ah, there you go. Yeah, back to back Good Friday. So there you go. Where the OG back to back side. One. All right, that'll do us for today, Zane. Yeah. <laughs> That's enough podcasting for today. If if you're listening to, all the way to the end, you may have noticed there's no video because we're having issues. With Maybe you. there's audio issues as well, possibly. Let me just well, I hope not. Hopefully we don't have audio issues, but we will, we'll, we'll try and keep getting episodes out every week. We'll just see how it goes week by week. But... That's the grand final review done. Thanks for listening. Let's trot. Let's trot, baby. (laughs)